All right, we're back, folks. Okay, so you don't want your old man to know. No, no. That's fine. Listen, we all keep secrets, but I'm telling you, you can level with me about this science project of yours. I uh, am not a scientist. Go ahead, ask me what D equals. MC squared. Equal? I have absolutely no idea. See? I don't know where you got your information from about me, mister, but you're wrong, wrong, wrong. Uh, no, no, no. I'm right, 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 oh, no, and you're just too scared, 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 scared to admit it, admit it, admit it. Will you just give me a chance? Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Callahan. And so's lying. Uh, well, no, but it should be. So spooked. Sounds like you're a little scared of your father. Scared of my father? Pop is the most learned, just, incorruptible judge that Hill Valley has ever seen. The only people scared of Judge Brown are people with a dark secret to hide. And I don't have a dark secret to hide. Oh, uh, really? I know about you and the bottles of glue and the traffic cones and... Okay, never mind. I probably shouldn't know. Come on, you can trust me, Doc. Uh, Emmett, it's your future I'm looking out for. In more ways than one. What are you talking about? I'm talking about you and science. Oh, that word again! If you insinuate I'm a scientist once more, I'll sue you for defamation of character! Uh, huh. Yes, how dare you actually compliment me and say that I'm an intelligent person? Come on, come on. In person, in person, in person. Oh, yes. Will you just give me a chance? Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Callahan. So, about your rocket drill. Uh, about your... Don't say it. Or do we take H to stand with her mm. radio line operator? Well, in that case, uh, Doc, you're being a little bit uncooperative here. Do uh, you think maybe you can help me go and get you under control? Oh, God, this is getting weird. Psst, Doc! Well, I met your younger self. Great! And I gotta say, you're kind of uptight. What? You won't even talk to me. I find that hard to believe. Tell me what happened. Okay, here. Let's see. He says you're not a scientist. I tried asking him about your rocket drill, but he says he's not a scientist. What? What? Oh, uh, father. What's yep, he gotta yep. do with this? In 1931, I was still deathly afraid of my father discovering the truth about my scientific predilections. So I carefully kept them under wraps, practicing science at odd hours, away from his prying eyes. That sucks. Yep. It sucked a lot. Fortunately, I eventually stood up to him. But right now, my younger self probably thinks you've been sent by my father to check up on me. Uh, that explains it. All right, so how do we earn your trust? What do I do to convince Teen Doc that I'm not a spy? I'm not sure. Uh, let's see. Well, he does talk to himself a lot. And, yeah, people that talk to themselves tend to be a little bit nuts. Not that I know anything about that, but... Why does your younger self mutter all the time? Muttering? Why would I be muttering? I, I, I never mutter unless... Uh... The Hill Valley Expo! Expo? Yes, the Expo! How could I have forgotten? In a few months, the younger me will put on a demonstration at the Hill Valley Exposition, my first public foray into the world of science. Everyone in town will be there, including a number of noted inventors who shaped my career. So, oh. it was a big success? No, oh, no, it was a miserable failure, but it was a spectacularly miserable failure, one which marked my transition from an amateur garage scientist into a professional seeker of truth. So you moved to Enaba and decided to hunt down a crazy serial killer? Oh, eh, I've heard of weirder, uh, uh, I've heard of weirder career transitions. What does this expo have to do with you muttering all the time? When I was younger, I used to relieve stress by working on complex mathematical conundrums. No doubt my younger self is working on some impossible problem in an attempt to work off cerebral steam in the weeks before the exposition. What was I muttering about? I don't know, uh, H to the something when the universe is something else. I I'm not so good at equations. That's too bad. I bet if we could solve my younger self's problem, he'd be more inclined to listen to you. Well, uh, if he okay, some people solve uh, complex mathematical equations in their head, and some people just go and mutter prime numbers to relieve stress. Everyone's different, I guess. One, three, five, seven, 
<clears throat> Anyways. You know, your younger self seems really dedicated to the law. It's a facade, I assure you. I had to keep up appearances to appease my father. Yeah. I still can't figure out what your younger self is muttering about. Last. If only I could hear him myself. All right, hang on a second. Let's talk about your younger self's problems later. Okay, but don't forget we're on a bit of a deadline here. A uh, deadline? Uh, remember, we have a time machine. If need be, we could just go back like a... Uh, oh. Actually, Marty, why don't you just go back like a week or so? You know, just to... Uh, hang on. Yeah, just go back like a week or so to give yourself more time. Don't think, Emmett, think. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. I... Oh. Uh, hello, sunshine. How are you? Where? No. Multiply by the inverse of A, H to the A, multiply by the inverse of A, I, oh, oh. Doc will want to hear this. Again, dude, just count primary numbers. It's much, much easier. Ben. 1, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13. There. Come on, come on, come on. Ticky talky, ticky talky. So, Doc, does this ring a bell? Oh, think, Emmett, think. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. I Good know. grief! Is that me? I sound so... Young? Nasally. I was gonna say intense. I forgot how wound up I used to get. Yeah, oh. but what are you muttering about? Oh, that's easy. It's Ivanov's conundrum. Just tell my younger self that H equals a Hamiltonian operator. Won't giving him the answer mess up the time stream? Only if it turns out that reality is actually nothing more than a holographic illusion created by the interplay of subatomic particles on a vast two-dimensional membrane. Uh, It'll be fine. I'll just pretend that what you said makes sense then just move on, Doc. Yeah. Uh, something about... Two dimensions and ham and uh, holograms and uh, this is actually on the Enterprise or you know what? S screw it. Come on, come on, out of the cameo. Will you just give me a chance? Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Callahan. Let's see. H equals the Hamiltonian operator. The H equals the Hamiltonian operator. What did you just say? You are me. H equals the Hamiltonian operator. Yeah. Great Scott. If H is the Hamiltonian, then H to the A multiplied by the inverse of H can only be the same as the expectation value for A. <laughs> That's it. That's the solution to Ivanov's conundrum, the problem I've been wrestling with in my head all week. Oh, God, I'm sure all week. you would have figured it out by yourself in a day or two. The way you figured out how to build that rocket power drill. Where did you learn so much about science? Um, I am from, I am Darth Vader from the planet Vulcan. Well, it's like this. You know about my rocket power drill, then there can only be one explanation. What? You're from the patent office. I confess I didn't quite know what to expect when I sent the paperwork, but I never expected this. Welcome. I'm at your service. What can I do for you? Okay, fine. I really, really need your rocket drill. Can I see your rocket power drill? Of course, of course. Naturally, it's just a scale model, but it's nearly operational. I can show it to you, say, first thing in the morning. Um, let's see. Well, I kind of needed a little bit yesterday-ish. Nah, that's no good. I need to see a full-size model. <gasps> that's fully operational. Whoa! Tonight. Tonight. <gasps> Otherwise, we'll have to award the patent to a competing inventor, uh, Dr. McCoy. Damn it, Marty, I'm a done. doctor, not a time I mean, traveler. It might be possible to construct a full-size working model in that time frame, but I haven't got the main ingredient for the fuel. I'll get it for you. What is it? 190 proof grain alcohol. And you know how difficult it is to get a hold of alcohol these days. Especially oh. now that someone's blown up the speakeasy. And besides, there's no way I can get off work until I've delivered the subpoena. Part of the investigation into the business affairs of Kid Tannen. 
Is it vitally important you see that rocket power drill today? Yes. Is it That's vitally what important you deliver that subpoena today? Yes. That's Listen, what late. I'll help you deliver it, and I'll see to what you get the alcohol you need. <laughs> It'll help you get that drill finished by tonight. Deal? Deal. Here's the subpoena. Arthur McFly? Oh, boy. Get a subpoena my grandpa? <gasps> it's Kit Tannen. Hello, young friend. Hey, Hello. I just saw him at the soup kitchen yelling at Arthur McFly. I'm not surprised. Arthur does the books for his business. What kind of business? That's what the DA is trying to find out. Huh. Let's go talk to him. Oh, Are you insane? Kid Tannen can tell us where Arthur's hiding. Uh, yeah, well, he can also have us fitted for a Chicago overcoat. That'll work, too. I would have gone with fitted for a pair of cement shoes, but that's just me. So, about that subpoena. You have to deliver a lot of subpoenas? Father's always sending me out to do these dirty jobs. He wants to expose me to different kinds of people. All he's exposed me to is a lot of new curse words. Oh, boo-hoo. If serving subpoenas is such dirty work, why don't you just say no? Look, what's the worst thing that can happen to me on this job? You could get shot. Or killed. Yeah, well, yeah. believe me, that's nothing compared to what I'll get if I mouth off to my pop. Well, all right, fine. We're gonna find Artie. Any idea where we could find Artie? Not a jot. If only we had a way of tracking him. Oh well, yeah, he did say something about heading back to the safe house. And unfortunately, I don't see Sly anywhere around here, so we're kind of up the creek here. The subpoenas for Arthur McFly? Have you seen him? For a few seconds in the soup kitchen, but I think he's gone back into hiding. Brilliant deduction, Einstein. <laughs> So, what do you know about Artie? What do you know about Arthur McFly? Certified accountant. Graduated Hill Valley five classes ahead of me. Seems like a nice fellow, actually. How did he get mixed up with a guy like Kid Tannen? Who knows? Sometimes people find themselves stuck in situations they can't get out of. Yeah, not that you wouldn't know anything about that, would you? So, aside from Tannen having a fuse even shorter than a gnat, what, can you, what else can you tell me about him? How about Kid Tannen? What do we know about him? He's loud, he's obnoxious, he's not very bright, and he he's doesn't a tannin, like anybody right. getting in his way. Yeah, that's a tannin, all right. Mm-hmm. So, your rocket drill runs on booze, huh? This might be a stupid question, but couldn't you have designed your rocket-powered drill to run on fuel that, you know, isn't illegal? Illegal? What does law have to do with science? Um, science has its laws. You of all people should know that. Uh, yeah, who cares about that stupid ethics thing anyway? <clears throat> Couldn't you tweak your engine design a little so it runs on something else? Like what? I don't know, gas maybe? Gasoline? <laughs> Yesterday's news. You'll see, by 1940, automobiles will all run on pure alcohol. Yeah, and then we can go and fly around in our magical rainbows and unicorn hooves. <laughs> Some of us down at the patent office are wondering, what made you think of a rocket-powered drill? Ah, that Why not? to the center of the earth by Jules Verne. It was a revelation. Yeah, that's kind of what we figured. Yep. Oh, uh, speaking of Jules Verne... You read the time machine? H.G. Wells? Not yet, but it's on my list. Huh, well, might want to get on that. We'll get that subpoena delivered. My name isn't... Harry Callahan! There we go. Yeah. And we're going to get to work on that subpoena next time. This is David Lab of On David's Brain telling you, be sure uh, be sure to watch who you make friends with. Might turn out to be a sociopathic gangster. Who knows? Later.